Norman Houston, thank you for coming to see us here at the UNC Chapel Hill. Thank you for talking to the Craftsman event series. You are the director of the Northern Island Bureau in Washington, D.C. You have been in that role for many years, so you're very experienced regarding both Northern Irish and American politics. Let me ask you, is Northern Ireland, is Brexit and how it affects Northern Ireland, is that something people in Washington, D.C. talk about? Well, it's very important for those that have an interest in Northern Ireland, and as you can imagine, in a city like Washington, there's quite a lot of Irish American politicians and quite a large Irish American community. And yes, there is concern. I think that people in America and in Washington in particular have invested so much of their time and effort in the Northern Ireland peace process. They've seen Northern Ireland develop economically and socially. And I think they want to be absolutely sure that Brexit isn't going to make that difficult. Mm -hmm. Do you think Brexit can really or could really have an impact on the peace process? that violence will return, that the bad old days will come back, as some people fear, or is it all a little exaggerated? Well, I personally don't feel that. I think after over 20 years of um, economic growth and prosperity, I don't think anybody in Northern Ireland has any appetite at all for a return to violence. And you've got to remember that at least one generation and another generation that's just been born recently have lived um, without the spectre of violence in their lives. And, you know, Brexit is a big challenge for everyone, but I really don't see in any way that we would ever return to the past. I don't think anybody in Northern Ireland wants that. Thank you. The Irish, the so-called Irish backstop has become a big issue in the whole Brexit thing. What is it exactly? and How could it possibly be overcome? Well, the easier thing is to explain it rather than to how we get out of it. But essentially, it's an insurance policy which the European Union uh, want to be uh, brought in, whereby if the United Kingdom leaves the European Union uh, without a proper deal, that the backstop would allow Northern Ireland to remain within the customs union, and therefore there would be no need to have a border on the island of Ireland. Um, obviously, this is a big issue now because no one wants a hard border, uh, certainly none of the Northern Ireland parties, uh, nor the British government. But it's uh, one of these conundrums, you know, how do you uh, prevent a border being there, but yet have one part of the island in the European Union and the other outside? And I think this is a matter that the British government and the European Union hopefully will resolve before the 29th of March. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. When you think about the economic situation in Northern Ireland, of course it has improved since the good old days of uh, the troubles, really the bad old days, but how good, how bad is the economic situation? Well, I don't think Northern Ireland's ever been in a better place economically. The peace process and the signing of the Good Friday Agreement in April 1998 really created the foundation for the Northern Ireland economic trajectory to really take off. I mean, now we can boast of having an unemployment rate of less than 4%, which we have really never had before. We have 900 companies from all over the world, 180 of those are from the United States. They alone employ 35,000 people. Our trade figures went through the roof, and almost a billion dollars worth of tourist revenue came in in 2016, or most recently, um, uh, graduated year. And uh, I think the economy is actually doing really well. But most of these jobs are still government jobs or government supported jobs, they're not private industry jobs. Isn't that correct? Well, we were for a long time heavily reliant on the public sector. You're absolutely right about that. But when the executive came into power back in 2007, uh, they were very keen to rebalance our economy and bring in more outside companies. And that's slowly been happening. Northern Ireland still would have more people in the public sector than the rest of the United Kingdom. But that figure has fallen to under 30%. And we're getting more and more service industry coming in. And there's less of a reliance on the public sector. And that's the trajectory which we hope to continue. 56% of all the Northern Irish voters who voted in the referendum wanted to stay within the European Union. So quite a majority. Does that mean Northern Ireland is really deeply divided again, not just between the religions and the nationalities and the unionists, but also in the Brexit question? I do think that the Brexit debate has become very fractious and if you listen to the various reports from the various political groups and from the business community and others, uh, people are uh, uncertain what's going to happen. They, they want some sort of clarity 
I do think that all the political parties have been very clear that they do not want a hard border. But I do think that uh, the debate has become uh, quite angry and that people are on both sides have very, very strong views about whether Northern Ireland should remain in the European Union uh, or leave. And I do think it's worth pointing out that, yes, we did vote to stay in, but we're a very small region of the UK in terms of population, only about 3% of the UK population. And we are part of a larger nation and uh, we will be leaving uh, in March. In England, Brexit has become really the, the talk of the town. Almost every conversation deals around Brexit. Is that the case in Belfast as well? Yes, I think very much so. I mean, we say in the government system that our broadband is com completely taken up by discussions on the B word, in other words, Brexit. And of course, you know, people are now dealing with the complexities of Brexit, the amount of legislation that needs to be changed, uh, the amount of work that would be involved in any sort of uh, trade deal, the amount of work that would need to be involved if there were to be some sort of customs post or whatever. So I think the enormity is hitting people of um, just uh, how difficult this is going to be to manage. So the easiest solution really would be to have a second referendum, wouldn't it? Well, no, I think that's a matter for our politicians in Westminster to make their mind up about, you know, I don't think any civil servant should, should comment on that. Uh, there has been a lot of discussion about it in the press, but I think we should wait and see what happens next Tuesday, the 12th of March, in the House of Commons and take our lead from that. A good friend of mine from Belfast keeps saying, these people get up about, get all worried, uh, uh, and, uh, get upset about a problem which really within three or four years won't be a problem anymore because Northern Ireland will have joined the Republic of Ireland as a unified state. Is there something in there? Well, I wouldn't hedge my bets on that one. You know, I think that any um, Belfast Telegraph, for instance, one of our main papers has surveyed this quite a lot. And there's no indication, actually, that, you know, it's axiomatic that that, that would happen. I mean, this is a question that's come up throughout my career. But um, at the end of the day, to date, the majority of people in Northern Ireland seem happy to remain uh, within the United Kingdom. The problem really is, or one of the problems, one of the many problems is that uh, Theresa May, the British Prime Minister, needs the 10 seats of the Northern Irish DUP to continue governing. And the DUP wants to leave the UK, uh, the EU, not the UK, obviously. <laughs> um, is that really the essential problem? So if the DUP changed its mind, or if there was an election in Belfast with a different outcome, we also would have a totally different scenario regarding Brexit. Well, I wouldn't like to speculate too much about another uh, election in Northern Ireland. I mean, the DUP uh, is a political party in Northern Ireland. It's the largest political party. It's the largest unionist party. And it has a mandate from its electorate to um, follow their wishes, which would be leaving uh, the uh, European Union with the rest of the United Kingdom. Um, I think that uh, you know the, the DUP has signed a uh, confidence and supply motion with the Tory government, and that also has been beneficial to Northern Ireland in terms of um, extra money coming into our coffers from the British Treasury. But in terms of what might happen after another election, and what, how the Northern Ireland electorate would vote is something I'd rather not speculate on. Would it really be impossible for Northern Ireland to have a special deal with the EU, which would make it a little separate from the UK, but it would still remain a part of the UK. So what is the big problem about treating Northern Ireland in economic terms slightly differently to the rest of the UK? That doesn't mean Northern Ireland is about to leave the UK, does it? Yes, well, I think the, the question is, 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 first of all, constitutionally, Northern Ireland is an integral part of the UK, Absolutely. just like England and Wales. And there has been some discussion about having some sort of special status where, for instance, Northern Ireland were to remain in the customs union, but constitutionally remain part of the United Kingdom. But for a sizable portion of the Northern Ireland population, the idea that Northern Ireland might be in some way separate or separated from the rest of the United Kingdom is a bridge too far. And I think this is particularly for people within uh, sections of the unionist community, community, they would uh, be very concerned about that, that any semblance of a border moving to the Irish Sea, for example, would be, uh, would be uh, uh, a bridge too far. And I think the issue really is about convincing people of the best place for Northern Ireland to be post-Brexit. But in a way, Northern Ireland is 
separate and different than the rest of the UK simply in geographical terms. It is not part of Great Britain. It is separate from Great Britain. Doesn't that make it naturally different, even separate to some extent? And shouldn't that be recognized in political terms? Well, I think it depends who in Northern Ireland you speak to. Certainly a lot of people would agree with exactly what you're saying. And I mean, one cannot argue that its geographical location is on the island of Ireland. But for a very large number of people in Northern Ireland, they gravitate towards the United Kingdom and they would see themselves as being uh, British and they would want to keep that link. And the fact that they're on a physically different geographical island, I don't think, you know, is is as important uh, as, the, as their affiliation to uh, to, to United Kingdom. Obviously there's also quite a large number of people on the island of Ireland who would very much affiliate with the, the, the rest of the island and gravitate there in terms of their theological sort of ideology and, and uh, identity. And this is the great conundrum of Northern Ireland. You have two distinct communities both looking to two different areas and what we really need to do in Northern Ireland is uh, convince both groups that, you know, uh, they can work together, they can reform their government, and they can work together to make Northern Ireland an even better place to live and work. Mm -hmm. I know you are a civil servant, you are not a politician, neither, neither Northern Irish nor British politician, but if it was up to you, do you have any bright ideas how to overcome the dilemma? No, if I was that clever, I would be earning a lot more money <laughs> and having a much more senior post. I just don't, I just always feel you're better leaving those things to the elected officials. This is a very diplomatic answer, but I appreciate it. Uh, Norman Houston, thank you for coming to UNC Chapel. Much appreciated. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.